Well, ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to configure an Almada Cloud configuration thingy. So, uh, what do we have here? We've got two of these Almada Cloud um, or Almada AC1200 access points. The exact model is on the box somewhere EAP225 Outdoors. We've got two of these bad boys. Now, we've also got the ER605. These guys go for about 89 bucks a piece. The ER605 is about 100. The Almada OC200 controller, just a small controller for the home, uh, goes for roughly about uh, 70 bucks. Now, this little guy here is clever because it's PoE powered, so you can plug it into your switch and power it by the switch. This guy here, on the other hand, is not. <coughs> so what we've done here is I've used a USB cable. I'm powering the little OC200 by the USB port on the front of this controller. Why is this thing sitting in a vise on my bench? Well, this is not way you guys can actually see what I'm doing from top down. So anyway, needless to say, here's what we're gonna do. So let's go to the computer for a second. Screen cap. Okay, so what I've done over here, actually, let me just uh, resize that quickly. Display settings. Bloody hell, in the middle of our recording. Uh, let's see here, change screen size to 200%, right? It's gotta be 200%. For you guys to see it properly all right there we go okay so this is now the appropriate size so what i did was i logged into omada.tplinkcloud.com okay once i was logged in i can now um detect this uh, i can add this controller so the computer is actually now plugged into one of the little ports over here so it's actually on this network so we're going to go add controller and it should detect it um here we go i'm going to add this yeah that's flashing all right, so it should detect it. Please provide a device key. Uh, let's see if I can just pull it off of here. Uh, oh, you're going to make me enter all of this. Um, So let's just slip that back in here where it can be held in place with the little cables touching anything. Boopity boop. Woo -hoo. All right, type in the image U33P. Next. Controller has been added to Amada Cloud. Perfect. All right. Uh, so we're going to go to config here and label it now. Okay. Let's see here. We are going to set this one up as uh, I think no, is it negative five? Negative five, I think. Uh, no, I'll just leave it on UTC. Screw it. Apply. There we go. All right. So the controller's been added now. Yay. Okay. Uh, that's good. All right. So now let's log into this uh, controller so we can actually add our stuff to it. All right. So uh, let's see here. Close this. I should be able to la uh, launch it now and log in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the little router here, the ER605. Connection is established. Uh, let's get started. Yeah, I'll bugger off. Okay. So first of all, mom and dad's country, region. No, we are not in the United States because, you know, there is a world outside of America. All right. So I'm just going to set that home. This is home. This is the premise that we are going to be on. Next. All right. So here's the ER605. Yay. All right. So we're going to add that. Next. All right. So if you do not have an Amada gateway or your Amada gateway has already been configured with WAN settings, please skip this step. With WAN settings override disabled, the WAN settings of the newly adopted Amada gateway in standalone mode will take effect on the controller. Please ensure that the configured gateway model is the same as the, with the adopted model. Otherwise, the controller will not adopt the gateway. If the number of pre-configured WAN ports does not match... Okay, so if you do not have an Omada gateway or your Omada gateway has already been configured with WAN settings, please skip this steps. So, there we go. Uh, online detection interval. Eh, five minutes should be good enough. All right, so we're just going to use one WAN port. WAN description, Starlink. Okay, connection type. 
Uh, Mac default. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all good. Okay, so we'll apply that. Next. Okay, so now we're going to create our network here. All right. There we go. Next. See how easy this is, by the way? Okay, the administrator name. Um, we're just going to call it, uh, let's see here, me. Actually, you know what? We'll just do that. Password, what am I going to use? Cool. Uh, device account. Boy, we're going to skip that. Uh, oh, yeah, device account. I need. I actually do need to put that in there. So this is for the cloud thingy. All right, so let me go back to the text message I got earlier about the configuration. All right. Password shall be unseen. Um, yep. Next. All right, so now this is all configured. So once we get into the Almada controller here, Huh, I'm gonna have to blur that out. Charming. <sighs> Here we go. Let me grab the Almada radios. And I shall just use a ubiquity switch to power these guys up. Alright, yep. Yeah, uh ooh, look at all this fancy stuff. Oh yeah, look at this neat controller. Ooh, yeah. I don't care. You're going to see this yourselves when you go to set these things up for the first time. Tutorial finished. Thought it took a video of your network. And, okay, so I'm going to update all these. Yay. Upgrade. Whoops. Yep, upgrade. Upgrade now. While it's doing that, I'm going to pause this for a second. I'm going to get a PoE switch. Here we go. So a cool little detail. I'm gonna switch back over to the other to the bench for now. So, ugh. stupid thing, stay. I gotta switch up my mount here for this camera. It is not awesome. All right. So what do we got here? There we go. So I've got these guys hooked up now. A cool little detail I'd like to point out about these guys. So they'll run on 24 or 48 volts. So these guys here actually say that they'll run on 24 volt passive or they'll run on proper poe at 48 volts 36 to 56 what does it say 36 to 57 okay that is proper okay so i've just taken a little poe switch here i've given it uh, 48 volts and i have plugged this in with proper poe so now i should be able to go back over here and it is actually doing its thing back to screen cap Oh my god, it's taking forever. All right, so what's rebooting here? Something over, oh, this is rebooting. All right, so I can't really do anything for that, so I can sit here and twiddle my thumbs. But um, yeah, these are great little outdoor APs, and these guys offer mesh support as well. So what happens is, is if one of these guys doesn't have physical connectivity, which is how we're going to configure this, um, this is going to be on a pole. And it's only going to be about maybe 100 feet from this one here. So these guys here will mesh as soon as there's no Ethernet connectivity. So as long as this one gets power, this guy here will feed it. So mesh is not awesome, by the way. I'm going to tell you that right now. And many of you guys are going to shit on me for saying that. But no, mesh is fucking garbage. Okay? I don't care what kind of equipment you use that's got mesh support. Um, the problem is, is that, uh, here we go. I was looking at the wrong cam. Eh, there we go. 
The problem with mesh is, is that when you've got a radio connected to another radio, one of the radios has to be used. Most of the time, mesh gear has uh, 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz support, which means that it'll typically use the 5 gig radio for higher throughput to mesh the two devices together. Now, the problem there is now that you are halving the throughput capability of the 5 gig on the two radios now, or on the radio that's actually pulling off of the primary radio. So the other thing as well is because it's 802.11, uh, what's going to happen is, is that if you've got shitty connections on the 5 gig, that means that your mesh is going to be shitty too. Now, if your mesh is shitty to begin with, then it's going to have poor connectivity for anybody connected to that, any client devices. So you really need to be cognizant of that. So mesh is not option, uh, awesome, and anytime you can hardwire stuff, go for it. So now it's telling me that my controller is offline, but it is not offline. Everything's connected. All right, let's see here. It looks like I am on the interwebs. Let's go back over to this. Yeah, it says it's online. Did the IP address change or something? Let's see what it says. It says that it's offline here, which is kind of stupid because it's not offline. Ah, uh, the link's stale. Okay, so now that we've got the access points connected, by the way, um, they should be detectable now. So let's go to devices here, and we should see them pop up, and we should be able to adopt them. All right, and there they are. So first of all, we've got this one. We're just going to go default because I didn't actually create a site name for this. It doesn't matter. All right. So this is pending adoption, the router. But I thought that I already adopted the router into this during the configuration. This gateway model is different from the gateway model configured in the WAN settings network. To change your gateway model, you can choose universal as the gateway model. Okay, that's an interesting point to observe. Um, so that means that this thing is it's got poo brain. All right, so we're going to label these now. So A8A2, I'm going to get my Sharpie here. Uh, this is A8A2. We're going to go poll. So that's going to go on the poll. So I'm going to click on this and configure it. So I just click on that. It's pretty straightforward, right? If you guys have used one, you've used a million. It's like a condom. Most of you guys know how to put them on. Many of you should have. Um, let's see here. Pull. Apply. There we go. And then the other one is going to be REM for remote. Or TRLR. Trailer. All right. So let's label this one now. Config. Apply. <sighs> okay, so that's done. Now, what kind of idiocy is this? Adopt. Default site. Adopt. This gateway model is different from the gateway model. Internet to change your gateway model. So I've got to change it to universal. So I've got to go to, uh, please go to Wired Networks Internet. I go again you idiot thing please go to wired networks internet well where is wired networks then huh that seems like a dumb thing to say uh, device type network check I'm not a hardware controller yes let's go to our settings and see if I can find it No, it's not in there. Let's try going up here and clicking on this. Preferences. Yeah, I'm still not seeing it anywhere. 
So you're saying that I can't adopt this, you dumb thing. Uh, wired. Let's see if we can find it by searching for it. No, it's not weird. Huh. I ain't going to criticize this. Okay, let's see here. Let's edit this. Um, default. I'm not impressed that I can't actually adopt this stupid thing. All right, so let's see here. Maybe now it will give me the option. Adopt. Okay. Please go to Wired Networks Internet. Okay. Where am I going to find that? Let's try here. No, I don't see it. Let's see if I can do it from here. I don't see wired networks anywhere. There it is. Man, it'd be nice if they actually told you where that was. Uh, let's see here. Hey, that's the one right there. So we're just going to go universal. Okay, port one. Quantity of WAN ports, two. WAN ports, one. All right, did I do what you wanted me to do, you stupid thing? Looks like it. All right, so now let's go back to our devices. Can we adopt you now? Go ahead, do something infuriating. Ah, okay. Adopt you. Charming young thing. Adopt, you can't, you can't, adopt, you can't, you can't, you gonna adopt, you gonna adopt, you gonna adopt, Yeah, I've noticed that anything that's kind of lower tier is kind of glitchy and finicky when you're doing shit with it. But I'll tell you one thing. I've been really impressed with TP-Link Omada. I've, I like it. I mean, obviously, it's not without its um, its pain. But, I mean, I enjoy it regardless. So, come on. So it's cool. <sighs> come on, hurry up. I want to get this done so I can go to bed, you bastard thing. I heard so he gets to sleep in tomorrow. Tomorrow is not gym day. Okay, are you doing something? What is you doing? Okay, clearly it's doing something because I've just lost access for whatever reason. It's decided to lose me access to it. Yeah. That appears to be what has happened. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to just... Oh, do we have connectivity? We do, so which means this, the controller is disconnected. We're going to reconnect the controller. At least you tried. It makes me want to take this and... You know what I mean? All right. Uh, let's see. Should all be working connected? Yes, it's all connected. Any software updates? Nah. Looks like it's all good. Cool. It's done. I'm going to label this.
All right, there we go. It's all configured. It's done. Cool beans. Now, something which you're going to notate here is that this little controller here is only showing up as 100 megs. So that's a good thing to be wary of. Um, so you, when you connect this little OC controller, you just want to connect it in with a single connection. It's just an endpoint. You don't want to pass through it because that's going to limit your throughput. Um, so that being said, it looks like we're all configured. <laughs> Configuring now? Really? Oh. So now that the router, the APs, and the there's no switch in this configuration are in here, uh, I can go to my settings tab. And any settings that I set up inside of here, um, mom, dad, will automatically be pushed to all the devices in here, just like it would do in a Unify account. So there's a wired. Here's our wireless networks, our WLAN. Now, if you're wondering how I got to this spot, um, yeah, go back. I had to click on the actual uh, device location to be able to get into it. AI WLAN optimization. Mm, no. In fact, we are going to want to have the maximum power output on these devices because of the way that they're going to be placed. Um, these are literally going to be outdoors. And normally I wouldn't say crank the bloody power on them, but... Um, Trust me, we're going to need to crank the bloody power on these guys. So let's just do that. I'm going to go to config here. All right, radios. TX power. Hi. So same thing with this. Now, the cool thing is, is now that all these devices are added, I can literally remove one of these APs and connect it uh, with not even over Ethernet, just give it power. I'll demonstrate in just a second. Okay, let's do this. I'm just going to go to trailer now. What if customer would let me do it like outside of the realm of ability? <sighs> oh, would you listen to that? My laptop's working hard, so it's actually spinning up. So how much time did that take me in total? Uh, on camera, 22 minutes to configure. All right, so I'm going to do one last thing for you boys and girls. I am actually going to connect uh, a POE pack to this so that it is isolated. And I want to show you what's going to happen here. So I'm not going to move over to bench right now because clearly you guys can see what I'm doing right here. My hair. Yeah, no, I'm frizzled. Frazzled, whatever. Okay, so I'm going to plug this into power here. Now I'm going to remove this one here, the one that's going to be configured for trailer. It says configuring, so I'm going to give it a second because uh, God knows I don't want it to bork. Rather than hitting refresh, I'm just going to go over here. There we go. So it's good. So now let's do this. Let's unplug this one. All right, now we're going to plug it into a PoE where it's isolated. So this is simulating Ethernet dis uh, disconnection, okay? Lack of Ethernet connectivity. It has power. It just doesn't have Ethernet. Now watch this magic here that's about to occur if it refreshes fast enough. Well, it's doing that. Oh, this is so much such a better way to get rid of hangnails. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that flesh fly. Oh yeah. You can get these things on alley. I think I paid a grand total of uh thirty dollars for it and it came with a bunch of bits. It's a little electronics tool, but uh, I guess that they're also used for manicures. It's great for grinding the flesh off of your hands. So instead of like picking at it or whatever, you can just go across it nicely with your little grinding wheel and 
You don't end up with a piece of flesh that's torn off all the way up to your earlobe. Oh, I get really bad hangnails too, so that solves that problem. All right, so this should be booted by now. So I'm just going to click on Dashboard and then Devices to Refresh. Heartbeat missed. All right, cool. So it's still booting. This should come up as wireless in just a moment. I'm just going to be patient. You can do it. Okay, so mesh should be enabled on this bad boy. This guy should come up on its own. Every time that I've done this before, it's actually, okay, trailer is isolated. There we go. So I've clicked on mesh here. I could have recalled that this thing did it on, on its own, but uh, anyway, I just clicked on mesh here. Now let's click link. And you see, it shows the access point that it can actually see wirelessly. Now, if there was more than one, that's right. If there's more than one, it'll show you the signal strengths to all the different access points. You can choose the one that is the best one for it to uplink to. So now that I've clicked link, this is going to try to connect it to pole because that's the one that I chose. All right. And any second now, make a liar out of me. You can't. You can't. See, look, 153. It's using the 5 gigahertz to connect. All right, so now if I click on pole and I click on mesh, trailer is connected negative 18 dBm. Yay. Now, it's still showing heartbeat missed, but if I refresh this page now, because apparently their software does not refresh very well, you should see a wireless symbol next to it that shows that it is connected wirelessly. So now this is connected via mesh as I intended. This thing will not be connected to the physical network when I uh, roll it out and install it. It will literally be on the side of a trailer, uh, giving full connectivity and proper throughput. So there we go, done. I have literally just configured all the equipment for my friend's property. So they now have a uh, router controller, like on-site controller with that's connected to their son's cloud account. And then we've got um, two wireless access points, one that's gonna be the primary it's going to be the master, and then we're, or sorry, it'll be the parent. Can't say master and slave anymore. Bad words. So this is parent, and this is child, okay? It's a lot softer, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, and the other cool thing about this is I do believe that you can also connect something into here on the LAN port, and it will bridge it in. Neat, eh? So there you go. I hope that gets your boat floating, and... Uh, that's really all there is to say. So, 89 bucks, 99 bucks, Canadian by the way, uh, 69 bucks. That's all there is. That's all she wrote. So anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, it is 10 o'clock my time. I'm going to bed. <clears throat> I'm gonna go curl up and drink some eggnog. Good night, folks.